Hello, this is Dr. Liu at the lead time. Have you used a hydrosol? What do you feel hydrosol is? There is a myth like a hydrosol is a byproduct of the distillation make people think it's useless. So in this video, I will give you a scientific data to prove the difference between hydrosol and essential oil and what is the composition, what are the phytochemicals within the hydrosol and the benefits of the hydrosol we can use all the time. In this video, I will use a rosemary as an example, demonstrate you how to make a hydrosol an essential oil by steam distillation, and also explaining based on the scientific research, tell the difference between the rosemary hydrosol and the rosemary essential oil regarding its uh, chemical composition. When we are doing the steam distillation, so we have the herbs within a steamer. So by the way, today I'm using the lead time KD5 distiller. It is designed for the hydrosol making, but it can make a little bit of uh, essential oil because it has a smaller steamer size. After we're making the hydrosol, I normally recommend just keep that small amount of oil within the hydrosol so it can keep the hydrosol the max potency. If you are new to distillation, uh, distillation is a heat and a water extraction process. For steam distillation, we have the water boil and the steam goes through the herb carry the volatile compounds. Volatile compounds are those chemicals within the herb or flower, leaf or root that bring its a special scent like a rose. We smell the rose because it has volatile compound and rosemary so the steam will extract them, the volatile compound and then cool down in the condenser so that go back into a liquid. That would be uh, essential oil and hydrosol. Hydrosol is a liquid form, is a water. It's a water phase of the distillate. And essential oil normally, for most of the case, 99%, the oil will float on top of the hydrosol. Now I collected uh, 500 milliliter the hydrosol. So it's time to uh, close the distillation. So actually I can see a layer of uh, the oil floating on top. If you see the light, you will see kind of like a very soft light. That's the, because the oil is on top. So you can see the oil drops are floating around and uh, it's a pretty cloudy pretty cloudy color because the oil is dispersed there. This is a fresh made hydrosol. So you would you wouldn't see this for the you know from those um the commercial hydrosol uh, because they have uh, extract all the oil out and this is a much more potent hydrosol. For saving the hydrosol, uh, so you want to use a glass bottle. Um, I use a clear one, you can choose the, uh, the color one. The clear one, you can see any change in the hydrosol. Uh, but just save it in a, a dark area. I put it in a, a box so it wouldn't, the sunlight wouldn't. Uh, uh, shoot on the hydrosol, so keep us uh, safe. You don't have to save in the refrigerator. Uh, just um, keep it at a, uh, uh, inside, so just stable temperature is good enough. For the fresh uh, made uh, rosemary hydrosol, the oil can disperse in the hydrosol, so make it cloudy. Um, but what is the difference between hydrosol and essential oil, especially in their chemical composition? A research measures the chemical composition by using 
So HPLC, that's a chromatography to separate the chemicals within the, um, you know, the sample, and then use a mass spectrum to identify the chemicals. So they use the technique to uh, measure the essential oil and also the hydrosol. Within the rosemary essential oil, there are about 28% of uh, called a monoterpene hydrocarbon. And it's a typical composition or chemical is called alpha pinene. Within the rosemary essential oil, there are almost uh, 20% that is uh, alpha pinene and with some other hydrocarbons. And then they have a 70% of uh, oxygenated uh, monoterpene. Major chemical is uh, eucalypto. It's also called 1A cinel. And we mentioned about eucalypto. It has a very good antibacteria performance and the uh, popularly used in those mouthwash product. So these two groups are taking 98% of the chemical within the rosemary essential oil. Comparatively, hydrosol has quite similar the composition as the essential oil. One of the studies they measure the hydrosol, I think that it's a fresh made hydrosol. So they have 15% uh, of uh, monoterpene hydrocarbon. The difference is they have way less alpha pining. It's just 1% compared with almost 20%. But they also have 70% of the oxygenated monoterpene and the eucalypto is the major compound. The difference also have the hydrosol has a more kefir and a more boronel and a more verbenone. So those three chemicals have a way more percentage compared with its essential oil. The reason because the hydrocarbon, the monoterpene, is hard to dissolve in the liquid. So that's why another study, when they just measure the water phase, they don't see much the monoterpene hydrocarbon. And the mostly are those oxygen in the monoterpene like eucalypto, uh, verbenin, the kefir. Because the eucalypto, kefir, and verbenin have the very good uh, medicinal benefits, this gives the hydrosol its benefits pharmacological benefits. Of course, uh, hydrosol is much diluted compared with its essential oil. Its concentration is about 0.1 to 1% of compared with the chemical within the essential oil. But even when you're using the essential oil, we know you always want to dilute it, dilute it to 1%. So that will be kind of a, a little bit higher than hydrosol. And there are also studies that measure the properties of a rosemary hydrosol. The first study is they use rosemary hydrosol to wash the fruit. They use the apple and compare with uh, just control group with the distilled of tap water. They found that the rosemary hydrosol can keep the apple stay healthy for a longer time. 20% longer than the tap water because the bacteria can make the apple go bad but the rosemary can help wash off or clean the bacteria while they are storing it. The second research, the uh, study is antifungal property of uh, rosemary hydrosol. And they found that rosemary hydrosol has a pretty good the antifungal ability. They use the MIC to measure how powerful the ingredient can help to kill the fungi. Lower number means it's more powerful because you use a less amount can make this happen. So that makes sense, right? So they compare three different hydrosol with the two different drugs. 
the drugs definitely have a much better the antifungal property but all of the three hydrosols can also work to uh, kill the fungal and the rosemary hydrosol is the best compared with the other two hydrosol the cypress and the sage and one of the interesting part is the candida albicans candida albicans is a natural fungus live in our body when it's outbreak it will cause a problem on our skin in the mouth and intestines and it's common for causing the thrush and the vaginal yeast infection so rosemary has pretty good performance it's 19 compared with the 2 and A of the two different drugs you see it's kind of a comparable because when you consider the side effects of the drugs most of the fungals can build resistance to many antibiotics but uh, the herb extract uh, they didn't show like uh, and the resistance coming from those fungals and it's much safer to use the third experiment is to measure the antioxidants of rosemary hydrosol it can help control 20 percent of the horseradish enzyme which is a oxidant a symbolic oxidant used to quantify the power of antioxidants it's pretty good you know the rosemary hydrosol it has a good antioxidant behavior and the thank you for watching hopefully after watching the video uh, help you have uh, more knowledge about what hydrosol is and how to use hydrosol and what's the difference between hydrosol and essential oil again thank you for watching please like the video subscribe the channel and see you next time